Your father was uh, imprisoned. He was a kind of mayor of Oslo. He was mayor of Oslo. When? And he was, he was mayor of Oslo in the 1920s. An extremely lovely person, a conservative politician, a lieutenant in the Norwegian army, and a Christian. He got a son who was a conscientious objector, left-wing social democrat, <laughs> and a pagan with Buddhist spots. <laughs> That's how I introduce myself religiously. Like a Dalmatian dog, you see, to sort of hopping happily around. And um, we just adored each other. And I had fantastic dialogues. And he presented conservatism with a heart. And all the things that I wanted to know. And if I have become sort of yin-yang oriented, the thing that Diana was hinting at, not too dark, light, white, black, but seeing the white and the black and the black and the white, it's to a large extent due to the dialogues with my beloved father. And the effect of the Nazis on your family? Pardon me? You're the effect of the Nazis. Yes, he as a physician, he <clears throat> was the one who received prisoners who had been tortured to put them together. So he was otorhinolaryngologist, and sometimes they attacked centers up there. And he organized the way with which they could meet people from the resistance movement so that they could tell what they had revealed under torture. On the corridor outside the operation room, there were German soldiers. And you know, Amy, that thing works month one, month two, month three till the moment come when one German soldier is bright enough to open the door. So my father was arrested that night. The, um, he stayed 14 months and, um, in concentration camp, just outside Oslo. He was what we were most afraid of, was that he would be sent to Germany. The thing number two was that he was, as a prominent Norwegian, used as a hostage for English bombing. And one of his colleagues, also a uh, chief physician at the municipal hospital, was shot in reprisal for English bombing. The English came very often and bombed, uh, with about the same talent in bombing as they have in Afghanistan. It's just unbelievable, and uh, one would believe that now they have made smarter bombs. Uh, they killed a lot of civilians, and the Nazis triumphed each time, and we were scared to death. And Amy, my task was, this was only my mother and me, my two sisters were in Sweden as refugees for illegal work, clandestine work. My task was to pick up the newspaper every morning with the possibility of a headline, Dr. Galtung executed last night in reprisal for the bombing. How does one do that? Becomes a routine. You pick up the paper. And that headline never came. And he was released the day Roosevelt died, 18th of April, 1945. So he was the bright point, Roosevelt was the dark point. That day, which of course is unforgettable. He happened to, the to be the physician or the commander of the concentration camp. And I'll just finish with that. He asked him, what are you going to do now? You seem to be losing the war, my father said. And he said, after the war, we will make ourselves systematically loved, systematically believed. Now, it's the word systematic I would underline in that sentence, very German. But they have been quite good at it. To put it that way, uh, we have reconciled. And Germany is the only major perpetrator country that has fully engaged in reconciliation. By admitting completely we did it, presenting the details, and presenting its conversion. By embracing rule of law, democracy, human rights. That was not easy, and their enemies came half of the way, 
and I'll stop with that, by the two brilliant French politicians who said, Germany has been so atrocious that it has to become a member of the family. And that family was the European community. So I've been looking for two Arab presidents who would say Israel has been so atrocious that it has to become a member of the family, a Middle East community. <laughs>